Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh. The Together Again tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp. Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org. It's exciting that the business boutique was made for you. I know that I can make a difference in people's lives, and I want to do that. Hearing a lot of what other people are going through is really healing in a sense and motivating as well. I have the world in my hand, and I can do whatever I want. Learning from some of the top leaders who can make these dreams a reality is just so exciting. It ignited a passion in me to know she can do that, we can do that too. I'm so blessed to have heard the podcast that led me to this moment. everyone, welcome to the Business Boutique Podcast. I'm Christy Wright, and today we're talking about values and how your personal values inform your business. Now, you might remember in episode one when we talked about finding your why, and this is similar. This is part of the foundation of your business. Now, if you missed that episode, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that portion of the teaching as well. Now, later on in the show, I'll be interviewing seven-time Grammy Award winner Hillary Scott about how her values inform new music and how she stays grounded while balancing her career with her family. We're also going to hear from Annie Moss, and she's a woman who started a business based around her passions and her values. I'll also be answering some of your questions, but first, let's talk about values. Now, before you write me off and think that I'm going to teach you about a cheesy corporate practice where you put plaques on the wall and then you never revisit it again, think again. I want to talk about how values affect you in not only your personal life, but also especially in your business. Many of us have this idea of core values, of something that's just a good idea, but no one actually lives out. They are things that you see in the hallways when you walk through a big office building, or maybe something that's on pamphlets and brochures. But I want to talk about core values that affect your business day to day. And it affects your business even if your business is small even if it's a side business or hobby business and it's run out of your craft room or your attic, core values still matter to you. Think of it this way. Core values are like your compass. They define your true north. It helps you in every aspect of your business and you have values whether you realize it or not. For example, Every day, you probably use your personal values to make decisions. They help inform what things you will do or won't do, which things are important to you or not important to you. Most likely, your values right now are subconscious. You use them in the framework of your decision-making, but you're not even aware of them. And that's what I want to change in today's episode. I want to make you aware of your core values, your personal values that we are then going to transfer to be core values of the business. Knowing what your values are is very important, and here's why. For one, like I said, they help you make decisions. So if you use your values to make decisions in your daily life, they will also help you make decisions in the business. There will always be situations that you didn't see coming. There will be circumstances that you couldn't have planned for and no handbook could have prepared you for. But when you know what your values are, When you know what your true north is, it helps you make decisions about how to handle those situations and those circumstances and those people because you know what matters to you. Understanding your core values is also important because they help you build a consistent brand and experience. For example, when you walk into many of the best brand name company stores, you have a consistent experience. When you walk in Target, you have a consistent experience. When you walk in a Walmart, You have a consistent experience. Now, you may have feelings about Target or Walmart, but they value different things, and their brand experience reflects that. When you walk in a Starbucks anywhere in the country, you're going to have a consistent brand experience. And so your values matter not only for decision-making, but for helping you build your brand. As you brand yourself, which we've talked about in an earlier episode, it really creates an experience in the customer's mind. Your values are what help inform that brand. And probably the most important reason that values are so important, in my opinion, is that values help you stay true to yourself. One of the best parts about going into business for yourself is that you can build your business around your life versus the other way around. 
Your business gets to reflect you, your strengths, your weaknesses, your heart, your passion, and your values. You want to have a business that you're proud of. You want to have a business that's easy to talk about because you love it so much. And the best way to do that is to build your business around your personal core values. Now let's make this practical for a second. I can talk about values all day, but sometimes it helps to have a specific example. And you guys know, if you've been listening to my podcast for any amount of time, that I love to pull back the curtain on the business boutique and show you why we do what we do, why we make the decisions that we make. Everything we do in this business, the business boutique, is intentional. Now my brand is kind of intermingled with me as a person. You may have a company brand that people are familiar with the name or the logo or the tagline. But in my case, my business is me. It's Christy Wright, the business boutique. And so I want to teach you a little bit about some of my personal core values that are also values of my brand as a personality. I've got five I'm going to go through. These are not all of them by any means, but it will give you some examples of why I make the decisions that I make. For one, I really value authenticity. I always want you guys to feel like I'm being 100% real with you. I don't want to only show you the good stuff. I want you to have the whole picture, and I want you to see and hear about even the ugly parts of me and my story and my life. I want you to hear about my mistakes. In fact, one of the opening stories in a chapter in my book, Business Boutique, is about the biggest speaking failure I have ever experienced. And I can tell you guys, I got a little bit nervous and started sweating just writing it. That was like six years ago, and I still get nervous about it. But you know what? I'm human, and you are too. And the reality is, if you don't see the bad parts, then it's easy to feel like that some people have it all together. But I want to be authentic with you. I want to show you the whole picture, which brings me to my second value, relatability. I want to relate to you guys. I want you to feel like that I'm your friend coming alongside you, and I am on this journey with you because I am. I know the fears you experience because I experience them every day. I know the struggles you feel because I feel them every single day. And I am doing the best I can on this journey with you of putting myself out there in business, and we're learning together. But being relatable, I think, is the most important quality I can have in being credible because you don't really care what I have to say if you don't feel like I get you. So the goal of all of my podcasts or books or blogs or speaking engagements is that I want my audience to think me too. Me too. I struggle with that too. I get excited about that too. You know what? That's frustrating to me too. I love sharing stories with you guys that hopefully make you feel like that I relate to you because I absolutely do as I live this out in my own life of not only being in business, but also being a mom with two young babies and the craziness that that can bring. So my second core value is relatability and engaging with my audience and with my friends and fans and making them feel like we're in this together because we are. My third core value is humor, and I've tried to use this very intentionally in my writing and speaking and even in my podcast. And if you've been listening for any amount of time, you know I'm naturally pretty sarcastic and I'm a little playful. I like to push the envelope now and then, and I like to use this to entertain and engage people, but also just lighten the mood. Because the truth is, if I'm not having any fun, then you're not going to have any fun. But if I can use humor and make some jokes and be sarcastic and tell funny stories, then hopefully you're going to have fun as well. Humor also opens the door, I believe, to tell people the hard truth sometimes. You also know that sometimes I'll call people out. I'll bring you a challenge that might make you uncomfortable, but I think that that's possible because we had fun and we had some jokes. There's a great quote by Oscar Wilde that says, if you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh. Otherwise, they'll kill you. And guys, I don't want you to kill me. So let's just laugh. Let's make some jokes. Let's have some fun. And then we can hear the hard truth. Now that brings me to my next core value, which is a challenge. I love to challenge myself and I love to challenge those that I'm working with. You know, when I was a Young Life leader, they had a great line. They said, love the students where they are, but love them enough to not let them stay there. You know, I'm always challenging myself, and I want to share that challenge by pushing others to be better so that you can improve your life and reach your goals. And my last core value that I'll share with you today is encouragement. At my core, I want to spread hope. I want to breathe life into people. I believe that God has gifted me as a speaker and writer in using words as a tool. But as you know from personal experience, and I know all too well through social media when people can be not so kind sometimes, words can be a weapon that can tear others down. Or words can be something that breathes life into people. 
Do you know that someone could change their entire day? In fact, you could change the entire trajectory of someone's life just because you spoke words of life over them. It could be a quick interaction. You know, just the other day, I was at UPS mailing a shipment to my family in Florida, and I promise you, the guy that was helping me was so unreasonably cheerful, it changed my whole day. He had no reason to be cheerful. It was rainy and cold. It was late at night. It was five minutes before they closed. And this guy not only served me and went above and beyond, but he had the best attitude. Walking out of that UPS store, I was in the best mood because of him. I think words can be very powerful, and I want to use words. I want to use this gift I've been given to speak hope and life over people. I believe that, honestly, most people go through their days and their lives just needing someone to believe in them. They go through their day and their lives believing that they're not enough. They're not good enough. They don't have enough. They've not done enough. And instead, I want to be a different voice. I want to be a voice that ignites belief and hope and life into the people that I meet. So that's an example of five core values that I intentionally use in my life, in my work, and in my business. So when I make decisions for my brand in the future, I make sure that it aligns with these values. And then even as my life changes or my work evolves, knowing my brand values allows me to stay true to myself. It allows me to build a consistent brand and experience, and it helps me make decisions. So those are some examples of my values. What are yours? What are your core values? What is important to you that should be important to the business as well? I want you to think about them. I want you to work really hard to identify them. Now, for some of you that are like me and highly decisive and very opinionated, it's probably really easy to think about what you value. It's probably very obvious to you, and it won't take any time to write those things down. For other people, it might be a little bit of a struggle to think about what those values are. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have them. You just might not be aware of them. So here's a great tip. I want you to simply think about what you're already doing and then ask yourself, why are you doing that? For example, maybe you already respond to customer service requests within 24 hours. Why do you do that? Probably because you value time and responsiveness. Or maybe you already purchase high-quality materials to ship your products. Why do you do that? Probably because you value presentation. These are just two examples that you can use in your business of looking at what you're already doing and simply asking yourself, why am I doing it? When you find the answer to that question, you found something that's important to you, and then you can intentionally set it and write it down to be a core value in the business as well. So whether this is an obvious exercise for you or it's a little bit of a struggle, I want all of you listening to figure out what's important to you. I want you to identify your personal values and make them core values of your business. Whatever's important to you should be important to the business as well. The best way to do that is to identify and write down your core values. Now, before we move on, I wanna stop and take a second to tell you about some exciting news. Y'all, my new book is available. My book, Business Boutique, A Woman's Guide for Making Money, Doing What She Loves, is available on pre-sale now. You can actually order it today for only $20 and you get $60 in free bonus items. Now, of course, you know, I have a special offer just for you, my podcast listeners, and this is not available for anyone else. When you visit businessboutique.com slash bbbook and use the code bbbook and you'll get an exclusive podcast interview with my friend and sales expert, Nicole Walters. We spend some time talking about sales and y'all, this is not available to anyone else. That's bbbook. So whenever you use that code, you'll get that download in addition to your $60 in free bonus items. Don't miss this opportunity to change your life and your business. Now, I'm so excited about this next segment because my friend here today that is going to share with us about her values and her story is someone that you guys know and needs no introduction, but I will introduce her because we are on a podcast and you can't see her here. My friend Hillary Scott is a seven-time Grammy Award winner, and she's one-third of one of the world's most popular groups, Lady Annabellum, which I'm sure you've heard of. This group has earned six platinum singles and was dubbed ACM and CMA Vocal Group of the Year three years in a row. Y'all, this woman's list of 
awards goes on and on and on. But my favorite part about her is her heart. And so I'm so excited because she's here today to share a little bit about her heart and her story and her values. Hillary, thanks so much for taking some time with us today. Thank you for having me. I know so many people are familiar with your music and your success now, but I would love it if you would just kind of start at the beginning and tell us a little bit about your story of how you got started pursuing your dream. Because so many of our listeners are in those beginning stages and they might find encouragement from hearing kind of your early days. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up kind of knowing that music was my calling from a really early age. Both my parents moved from their hometowns to Nashville to pursue country music and both have had some success with that. My mom is an artist, Linda Davis. Um, She did a big duet that won a Grammy called Does He Love You with Reba McIntyre. Uh-huh. And then she and my dad were in her band for a long time as traveling musicians. And so it's always been a part of my life, the music business. And so for a few years growing up as a young girl would flip flop between what I wanted to do. But at the age of 14, I really knew that that was what God had really put me on this earth to do. So I started singing more in church and at school and writing a little bit just in my own like journal up in my room. And then at the age of 16, got the opportunity to do a Christmas show with my family. My mom had one here in Nashville out at Opryland Hotel. And so that was when I really started performing. And that's when I knew if I can sing Christmas songs night after night after night, if it's my own music, this mm-hmm. is amazing, mm-hmm. you know. And at one of those shows, a woman came up a songwriter, producer, and mentor she became and approached me about wanting to work with me. And so from the age of 16, I started pursuing music, country music. And it took about two years, but I got offered a development deal by a major label in Nashville and recorded a couple of songs and then did a big showcase for them. And the showcase was full, wall to wall with people. The label head even came up to me afterwards and was like, that was amazing. Where are you going to dinner to celebrate? But then by breakfast the next morning, they had said, we've decided to not sign you to a recording deal. So it was a huge career heartbreak for me um, at a really young age. And I'd kind of put all my eggs in that basket. Mm -hmm. You know, I was attending school, college at MTSU at the time, but it was a big risk and it was a big heartbreak. And that was in March of 2006. And so after that, I just had some really amazing counsel, community of people kind of rally around me, go, don't give up. This is just one obstacle. This doesn't mean that every door is a no, you know. And two months later, I walk into a music venue in Nashville and I meet my bandmates. I meet Tarles from Lady Annabellum. Now we're a band for 10 years. (laughs) And it was just one of those stories so many people have this where a door just slams in their face, but then another one busts wide open. And I just am so grateful for that. But that was kind of how it all began. And now it's been 10 years since we started. It's so cool to hear like those early days of that rejection that you experienced, but then how, like you said, one door closing doesn't mean all of them are closing. And then it wasn't long after that, that you started to see God's hand in kind of opening those new doors. Now, it's been kind of a whirlwind career. I would love it for you to tell us from your perspective. You know, I think it's easy to look at someone at your level of success or being a celebrity or all these different things and accolades and just wonder, you know, what is it like in terms of experiencing fear at that level? Because I think it's very easy to think successful people aren't scared or they don't have to deal with that. And you've gone through some transitions lately with putting out your first solo album, and you've even talked about having some fear around that. So talk about what it's like, even at your level of success, that it's still a struggle sometimes. It is. You know, I feel like at the heart of it, my parents just did an incredible job of instilling in me and my little sister, who's 16 now, just this industry is not going to fill you up. It's really fun. It's rewarding. But if you don't have relationships, if you don't have a relationship with God and good people around you, you're going to feel empty. And you can have it all, quote unquote, that the what the world defines as all, um, and still feel very lonely and very empty. And so they taught me that from a really young age of my dad would always say, Hillary, look inward and make sure that you're at peace in your heart and your soul with where God has you and what you're doing and make sure that you're doing it with people that you love and that are healthy for you and that you're healthy for. And so that was a huge kind of value that was instilled in me from a really early age. And the fear that comes with success is the world tells you you're only as successful as your last success. Mm -hmm. And sometimes 
failing leads to greater than sure. what you have ever achieved before that. And so I think that just having to fight those insecurities of relevance, mm-hmm. you know, at being in an industry that's ever evolving. I mean, every industry is, but creatively, the artistry of songwriting and what songs are working on the radio and how many albums you sell and all those things as the music business has changed so much, the pressures are definitely there. But ultimately, when I strip it all away and gain some clarity, it's about being genuine and being true to who I am as a songwriter, as an artist, and knowing that If I'm in God's will, if it's supposed to be, it will be. And with my family album, it was very clear early on that this was just the album we were supposed to make. Mm -hmm. You know, we had been through a lot. We started the process of making this record because my grandfather fought with leukemia. He fought for five months and then went to heaven, and that really impacted our family greatly. And then my mom lost her mother. And then over the past five years of our life as a family, we've just endured a lot of loss. And all of us in our own faith journeys have really grasped onto the comfort and the peace that only God can give. And we wanted to give other people, other families, the chance to hear those songs and those messages. And we felt like using our gift of song and music and family harmony was what we were supposed to do. And we started this album before I got pregnant and then miscarried our second pregnancy. And I was in the studio singing all these songs about the Lord and how faithful He is, and I was asking a lot of questions Mm -hmm. about that. And it was like God was truly speaking to my heart, saying, like, are you going to believe what you're singing about Mm me Mm -hmm. that you know is true, but are you in the midst of your greatest storm going to still choose to believe me Mm -hmm. and sing about it? And that was a huge test. Sure. But I can say that he, like he always is, was so faithful, and making this record was a healing process for me Mm -hmm. with all of that. So it's a long answer to a short question. No, it's great. (laughs) I love your faith is so, uh, there's such a confidence and a certainty, and I love that because it really is inspiring for other people that might feel like their faith is going through a shaky season. And so I think that's so important. And you said something a second ago that jumped out to me where you said, you know, this is a value that your parents instilled in you. And I know that in any industry, it's probably like this, but especially the music industry, especially with any type of fame or celebrity status, that it would be easy to be distracted by other opportunities that aren't in line with your values or who you are or feel pressure to be someone that you're not. Talk a little bit about your journey in your career in the music business and how you've been able to really stay true to yourself in, like you said, an ever-changing industry. Well, I mean, there are a lot of things I would go back and do different. I'm imperfect and have learned a lot from my mistakes. But I will say, I think having faith be such a huge part of my life growing up, but also having a baby sister. Mm -hmm who's 16, she's 14 years younger than me, and feeling like since the day she came home from the hospital, I've had to be a role model. She has saved my life in a lot of ways because I'm always thinking of her. And now having a daughter, the same thing. It's just the artist people in the public eye who choose to say that they don't view themselves as a role model, I can't really agree with that because we are. Mm -hmm. We're given this platform and this mantle to carry, and I think we should all take it seriously. And so I just try to remember that. I've been around a lot of different artists and a lot of different genres and all across the spectrum of having their head on straight and not. And the common factor of those that have their heads on straight is that they have people around them who hold them accountable. Mm. So I've always tried to keep people around me to pull me aside and kind of like shake me when I'm acting crazy. Right. And My mom is always, she's a very humbling factor for me. Mm -hmm. My dad, especially, he's like, (laughs) he's always the one to be very honest, brutally honest. But it's good because it's because that's just kind of just the way that this industry works, unfortunately. And, And I think it's anytime as a business owner, because I'm a business owner, this started out as a creative artistry and it's turned into a business. Sure. So having smart people around you, but also knowing like, I was 20 years old when this band started. I had a year and a half of college under my belt. I don't know anything about business. And just being humble enough to ask questions and to admit you don't know the answers and that Mm -hmm. you need some leadership. Those are big shoes to fill that I 
just really naively stepped into, and all three of us did with Lady Annabelle, of just like, well, here we go. We're starting a company. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We're going to figure it out as we we'll go. We'll figure it out as we go. That's how a lot of our listeners are, honestly. And some of the most successful people in business, they do. They're like, I'm not going to sit around and wait for it to be perfect. I'm just yeah. going to make it up as we go. We'll figure yeah, it out. And, Learn by doing. And for the executives and the bosses that are listening, there ends up being a lot of people around you that are really afraid to challenge you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's so important to intentionally put people around you who will challenge you, who aren't afraid to kind of push back a little bit sometimes. Because just because you know the right answer in one lane doesn't mean you're going to know the right answer in every other lane. Sure. (laughs) You know? Yeah, that's such a great piece of advice because I know it's easy to think, oh, well, our way is the only way. But a lot of times just having truth tellers around you that will call you out and keep your ego in check or any of those things really helps. So I know, you know, I've talked about this backstage about the crazy parts of being a mom of little ones. Uh, But tell me a little bit about your experience of what it's like with such a demanding career and also having a family. And I know there's no perfect solution to life balance. I struggle with this every day and I love to, I teach on it all the time and still struggle with it, which is why it's easy to talk about because we all struggle with it. But I would love to hear your perspective of, do you have any tips or tricks of things that really help you kind of shake the mom guilt and still do what you love while having a family? Well, your timing is impeccable. (laughs) <laughs> um, because I've just been really in the thick of evaluating that mm-hmm. this week. And I think the start to the answer of that question is it is ever evolving. You know, our child's needs as they grow up, I mean, you have two under two, one almost two, and eight weeks old. It's like yeah. their needs are very different. My right. daughter's three now. And so I feel like every six weeks or so, we're reevaluating her day-to-day schedule and what my schedule needs to look like and her daddy's schedule and, you know, all of that. And so I think just being kind to yourself in that it's going to be an ever-evolving balance Mm -hmm. and search for that balance. But one thing that I got really convicted of recently was just when I get home— putting my phone down. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a habit. And I think so many of us have it. And even keeping it on ring Mm -hmm. or on where I know I get an email, because as a business owner, accessibility is important, you know, but you can always put boundaries on it to where, okay, if my phone goes off, then I know there's obviously a message there. I'll check it next time I get up to go to the bathroom or when she's engaged with something that isn't going to be pulling my attention away from her. So that's one small, really practical thing that I try to do. And then looking ahead in the calendar, you know, we have, I mean, I think on my phone, on my iCal, I've got like eight different calendars (laughs) of all of our schedules, my husband's schedule, our nanny schedule, my bandmates, everything. So just trying to look ahead and plan for time because if you don't mark it off, it, it will get happen. filled up. Right. That's just the way that our industry in particular and I think anybody's life works. And that saying no to things, social events, or saying no is okay to just choose to be home. Like I used to go to every function or every after party because it might lead to a co-writing appointment with somebody. And it's like, you know, I think I'd just rather wake up rested and have an amazing morning with my daughter. It's just finding those balances, finding the ways to say no and knowing the difference between, okay, I could do that, but choosing to do that or be there for that isn't going to really affect the trajectory of our success in a way that is worth it. It's like weighing all of that. Does that right. make sense? Absolutely. It's funny because, Hillary, we haven't talked before this episode about life balance, but I teach this all the time. You literally just summarized what I teach on life balance. Oh. It's like about phones, <laughs> about saying no. It's about the calendar. It's like we are kindred spirits. Oh it's all gosh. the stuff that I'm teaching in like a couple hours oh. at our event. So it's just so true. Those little practical things of turning down things sometimes and putting your phone down and being present can really make a difference. And so yes. I think hearing from someone like you is just so inspiring for our listeners to know, you know, one of the things I tell people too is it's not perfect. It's it's messy mm-hmm. and you never sit back and go, oh, I've got it all figured out. You know, it's a yes. daily thing that, like you said, is constantly changing. I love that idea of it evolving as you go and reevaluating that based on your season of your business, you know, the needs of your family, the needs of the market, and yes. kind of figuring out what that looks like for you. Well, we're in the process of making a new album with Lady Annabellum, and that means that the record's going to come out 
what promotion looks like for that and the travel. I mean, we're entering into a really busy season. And so the timing is so great to be able to talk to you about this because I'm looking ahead going, okay, I'm wanting to put in place some very quality family time over the next few months because it's going to get nuts, you know? And it's so important to do that. And the same thing with accountability, whether you're a single mom or you have your husband at home, like, Equip someone in your life that's close to make sure that they're holding you accountable and finding times to rest, not only for yourself, but for your family. And for me as a creative, and any business really has a creative component, you have to pause. You have to kind of take a Sabbath to reset, you know, because if you just go and go and go, you lose your perspective. And I think it's important to shut it off, even if it's for a couple of hours. Absolutely. And it's such a great example because the seasons of your life change and your needs change. One of the things that I tell women all the time is your time is finite. You're always going to have to make choices. And so if you know what your priorities are, then when a season of life comes along, like in your case, the album launching, or in my case, I'm going to have a book tour in the spring, then some of those things that maybe are a priority and you have time for in a down season don't make the cut. So my example would be time with my girlfriends is really, really important. But if I'm only home five days a month, I'm going to see my family, not my girlfriends. And so my girlfriends know, and they're still going to be there when I have a down season in the summer, and we're going to catch up, and it'll be like we haven't missed a beat. But a lot of times, I think as women, all things are created equal, and we try to crowbar everything in. And it's okay if those seasons, some things don't make the cut, because your time is finite. And when you're in high demand, like many of our listeners, then you're going to have to make choices. I love the quote by Andy Stanley, where he says, the reality of leadership is that the more successful you become, the less accessible you become. That's right. And so you're just going to have to make choices about how you spend your time. So that's a great word and a good piece of advice really to wrap up on. And Hillary, one of the things that I love that you shared with our audience about your faith at our event that I would love it if you would share with our podcast listeners is just some words of encouragement as we yes. wrap up. Just kind of speak directly to them of maybe they're in a season of struggle in their business or they have some setbacks or they're discouraged, they have fear. Just maybe wrap up with some words of encouragement for them. Gosh, I mean, when I'm entering into a season of doubt or insecurity or fear, what I really try to do is take some time, intentionally set aside time to just get quiet and talk to the Lord about it and to really focus on who He says we are and how He defines us. Because so many times we get so caught up in what others think about us or if we've hit all of these marks by a certain time and it's like life is hard. And I think naming that, saying that, not being afraid to admit that Sometimes things just get really hard, and that sometimes you just need a minute to collect yourself and to pray into working through the things that are holdups for you, you know, and and asking God for breakthroughs. For me, for instance, having my daughter feeling like I loved my body again Mm -hmm. after what it did, which is an absolute miracle, Mm -hmm. and it took me some time, but Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I took that time, and Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I dug in on it and got real with myself and— feel great about it now. It's just, I think being honest with yourself Mm -hmm. is so important. And just there being nothing that you don't take to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. Nothing is insignificant to Him Mm -hmm. in your heart, in your thoughts, you know? And I think that's where I go. That's where I start. Well, it's so evident in all that you do, not just in your music, but also just your spirit, Hillary, of everything from the words that you share and just your heart behind them. So thanks so much for taking some time to encourage our listeners and also just share your story because I think it's incredible to see someone with your level of success still have that humility and the heart for the Lord. So thanks for being here. I've had so much fun. This has been a true honor, and I hope everybody listening got something. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, here's a story about a woman who has built her business around her passions and her values. We empower women through jewelry gifts. We have inspirational words on our jewelry that encourage women to live courageous lives, fearless lives. Meet Annie Moss. She's the owner and founder of The Vintage Sparrow, a jewelry company in Nashville, Tennessee. The Vintage Sparrow began as a result of Annie's passion to help others. Back in 2012, I was raising money to go to Africa on a mission trip, and I started making African-inspired friendship bracelets. And so it started there. I ended up raising $9,000 through friendship bracelets. So we built a church and also went on a mission trip. And it wasn't something I saw it being a business, but the Lord just kept opening doors and people kept wanting my pieces and it became a business. So in 2014, we started a website and it took off from there. 
and we just had some crazy awesome doors open, like wholesale doors in order of a thousand pieces. And that was amazing. So we just knew like God's on this and we're gonna go forward. Over the past two and a half years, Annie has seen her business grow and she's been able to replace her full-time income and leave her full-time job. The process of leaving my full-time job was probably one of the most pivotal moments and one of the biggest steps of faith. I felt for a year I was supposed to leave my full-time job and my husband wasn't there yet. And so I'll never forget, he came to me one night and he's like, I really feel like you need to pursue this. Like you need to go forward with your business. And I just bawled, I cried, because I had known, but I wanted our hearts to be in sync with that, like with what God was leading us to do. When I took that step of faith, God just continued to open the doors. Like that's when boutiques started contacting me, you know, and it wasn't, I still had to put work into it. I would love to say it was effortless, but it wasn't. You know, there was a lot of nights I was up making jewelry, fulfilling orders, reaching out to different boutiques and different people, cold calling, walking into places, giving my card. Her business has been very successful. We're now in 10 boutiques throughout Nashville, one in Missouri. I didn't have any experience with that. I remember the first time a boutique contacted me and asked me for a wholesale line sheet, and I had no clue what that was. So went to Google <laughs> and found out what it was and used my creativity and designed one. But we're now at a place where we're having to pull in people and invest and partner to give, you know, the look more quality. And so here we are two and a half years in of it officially being a business. And I just keep taking step by step. Like business wasn't in my background. I was a hairdresser for 12 years, so that creative side was in me, but not the business. So I learned how to pull people in that had the gifts that I didn't have. And it is what it is today because of that. Annie intentionally focuses on her faith every day, and it's had an impact on her business. Yeah, I think for me personally, um, it was a personal journey, you know, like just putting God first. And it's so simple, but like, starting my day with Him and just being sensitive to His voice throughout the day. Because I went from working with women in a social atmosphere for 12 years to working in my home alone. And so through the journey of my business growing, my personal walk with the Lord grew as well. And so like Him speaking to me and hearing Scripture throughout the day of like, you can do all things through Christ. So it was a very personal journey. Annie has been intentional about keeping her family a priority. And as a result, her husband has been a big part of her journey with her business. My husband's a processor and I'm a dreamer. He's a realist, I'm a dreamer. That's how God partnered us together, which is amazing. Cause I'll like jump off the cliff now where he's like, no, we're gonna like navigate. We're gonna like measure it and make sure it's safe, you know, but that works for us. And so I think having a business as a woman, being married, that your number one job is your home above your business. So I could spend all day on my orders and all day checking emails and doing the things that I see as important. But if my home is lacking, if my husband doesn't feel loved well, then I've missed the boat. And I'm still walking through that. Like that's a constant recalibrating on a weekly basis because we have busy lives. Annie heard about the Business Boutique event and decided to come. She's setting goals based on what she learned at Business Boutique. I just knew, like, I had to be there. Like, I have to be there. Like, I knew it was a God thing. I just knew in my spirit, like, God's like, you've got to, this is one of the next steps to take your business further. And that night after we had dinner, I got online and I bought the VIP ticket. I was like, this is my step of faith, like I'm all in. And I really want to take my business to the next level. And so I knew it was just destined that I was here. I've learned so much. It's definitely going to be like over the next month, I can see of just going through the notes and processing and tweaking and filling in the blanks to some areas of my business that have need to be filled in. They talked about goals, and that's something I'm kind of sifting through right now. We want to continue to stretch into boutiques nationally, also partner with Christian ministries that have a desire to make a difference. And I also have a heart to employ young girls and women. That's kind of a long-term goal. I've been able to employ girls for large jobs that we have and for shows that we do. So right now it's just like a case by case. We'll pull girls in and employ them for that time, but I would love to be able to employ girls and women full time. 
Annie's business has allowed her to be herself and allowed her to grow in her strengths and passions. Honestly, my biggest obstacle at times was probably myself and overcoming fear. Like, I can do this. And I knew God was on it. Just getting past myself. And it really forcing me to overcome the fear of I can't and that with God I can. I'm still working that out. (laughs) That's probably the area that I struggle most because I am a creative thinker. And I can go in 10 different directions at one time. And that's just how God made me. And I used to be ashamed of that, but I've learned to embrace it. But I've also learned that there's areas where I have to, my passion comes from God. About a year and a half ago, I was spending time with the Lord and I felt like He showed me that He's opening up the windows of heaven for creativity. And my creativity was always kind of boxed into being a hairdresser. And it was almost like this insecurity thing, like I can't go past that. But I just took hold of it. I was like, I'm going to take hold of that, God. And so I did. And it's proven true, you know, that there's been creative gifts inside of me that have come alive. So my passion absolutely comes from God. Annie trusts God with her business. And she's open to every opportunity and door that He opens. I just think for me, success has been taking one step at a time. And knowing that if God's with me, I can do it. Because many times I feel inadequate and I don't have the background, the business background, but I've just learned that if God opens a door, I'm gonna walk through it and I'll never tell him no, like I'm brave in that area. And so the process for me and the success, I would say has been just saying yes every day and still being intentional with everything that I do. If I can inspire women, like you can do it, like you can do this. I love Annie's quote where she says, we are all given a gift, It's our job to discover what that gift is and share it with the world. Amen, Annie. What an inspiring story. Now, if you guys want to jumpstart and grow your business, Business Boutique One Day will give you all the essentials you need. Y'all, we created this convenient local event that features myself and Dave Ramsey so you can experience the Business Boutique movement in your community. And of course, we have a special code just for you, the Business Boutique podcast listeners. You can receive $5 off any ticket to the Business Boutique One Day events this fall by going to businessboutique.com and using the code BBRIGHT. You guys probably know it by now, but that's B-B-W-R-I-G-H-T, and you'll use that code to get $5 off any ticket to the Business Boutique One Day event. I can't wait to see you guys there. Now, one of the things I love about this podcast is you guys are so interactive. You send us your questions, you send us your success stories, and I want you to know that we read all of them. So I want to take a second to answer some of your questions that we've received in the last couple of weeks. So if you guys remember from last month's episode, we talked about goals, and that really applies to the question I'm going to answer today from Naomi, where she's asking about having so many things to do and being overwhelmed. Here's what Naomi says. Hi, ladies. I'm a full-time dental hygienist and full-time photographer wearing the latter of those hats right now after a full work day. How do you find the energy to keep going? I absolutely love what I do, but I don't feel like I'm handling all of my responsibilities even marginally, hence the dirty dishes in the sink, dirty clothes in the hamper, and the paper plates from last night's totally healthy frozen pizza dinner. I think my husband is around here somewhere, but I feel like I haven't even seen him. I have three weddings to finish editing and many more family sessions, and I feel like I'm about to lose it. I have thought about my why, but it feels so intangible right now with this mountain of work in front of me. Do you have any advice? Naomi, you are a busy woman, and you know what? I love that about you. You are out there moving and shaking and making things happen. But as you're experiencing, when you've got a lot of things going on, even if they're good things going on, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. I want to give you some encouragement. Right now, you are in a season. This season is not going to be forever, but you are in a season where you have a lot of things going on. So I want to challenge you during this season to set some goals in these different areas of your life. What would be a great goal for your marriage? Would it be one date night a month that you put on the calendar, you go ahead and plan for childcare, and you make it happen? What would be a great goal for your photography business? Would it be to hit a certain number of clients or sessions or a certain number of revenue or a certain number of personal income? What would be a good goal to set in your home? Maybe your house isn't sparkling clean and maybe the toys don't get picked up, but maybe you simply have clean dishes for the next day. If you can set some goals in these different areas of your life, then you can work to reach that goal versus always feeling like you're trying to catch a tidal wave with a teacup and it's never enough. That's discouraging for anyone. 
when you feel like you work so hard all day and all night and it's never enough. Most often, that's because the work is never done. In our family, in our home, in our side business, in our full-time job, the work is never done. So instead, I want you to create milestones to hit. Set little goals that you know are achievable. They may be a stretch, but they're achievable. And then you can not only reach them and feel like you're making progress in each of those areas of your life, but you can sit back with the satisfaction of knowing that you have accomplished a job well done. You have reached that goal, and you can set the next little goal for the next month. Naomi, that's a great question, and I hear your struggle. I experience it in different times of my life as well, and I just want to encourage you, you are doing a good job. This season of craziness won't last forever, and I hope setting these tiny goals helps get you through it in the meantime. Thanks for writing in. Now, if you guys have a question about something we've talked about here on the podcast or anything regarding your business, I want to hear from you. You can send me your questions via Twitter and Facebook by using the hashtag AskChristyWrite. We've also set up a group in the Business Boutique community at businessboutique.com called hashtag AskChristyWright, where you can send me your questions and interact with the rest of the women there. So send me your questions. I want to hear from you. Okay, guys, now we're going to talk about your homework for the week. And I will tell you of all the times I've given you homework, this one, this assignment is the one I am the most excited about. Our team has been working on something incredible for you, and I finally get to announce it this week. Now, I want you to think about something. Have you ever wondered how much money that you can make with your business idea? Or maybe if you already have a business, you probably know it's tough to accurately predict how much money you're going to make for the year. Well, I'm really, really excited because we have an amazing new tool for you on my website called the Profit Potential app. Here's the thing. All you have to do is answer a few questions about your business or your idea, and it's going to show you your potential for profit for the year. It's going to show you what you can earn. It's going to show you what your pricing should be. It's going to allow you to change those numbers based upon what you want to earn and what you want to set aside for taxes. Like this tool is amazing. It only takes a few minutes to complete and it's going to break down your income, your taxes, and whether or not you should raise your prices. Once you're finished, you can adjust the numbers. It's an interactive slider that shows you how much more money you can make if you increase your hours or raise your prices or decrease your costs. The best part is this, it's completely free. So your homework for this week is to go to businessboutique.com and click on the Profit Potential app and get started. I want you to use this tool and you'll be amazed at what you find about how much money you can earn from your business. Now, before we go, I want to remind you to write down your values. What's important to you that should also be important in the business? What's a passion or purpose in your life that you wanna transfer to be a passion or purpose in the business? Take some time this week to write out your core values of your business. And once you get your values written down, I want you to share them with the Business Boutique community. You can comment in the show notes to this episode at businessboutique.com and let me know what is going on at the heart of your business. I can't wait to hear about your passion and the drive behind what you do. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for hanging out with me as always. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. For more encouragement on how to make money doing what you love, visit businessboutique.com. Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh. The Together Again Tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp. Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org.